This is Extreme Speech, an EKB News special report. Good afternoon and welcome back to our special news report. I'm Gary Sloan. And I'm Jill Fraley Dodson. A lot of movement going on in downtown Pikeville at the moment. That's where we're going to go now live to news reporter Shannon Deskins, who has been covering the event from the start. Shannon, what can you tell us now? I'm Shannon Deskins reporting from downtown Pikeville and what you are seeing behind me is the arrival of the Traditionalist Workers Party. Uh, now they are, there's about 40 cars in their caravan according to local law enforcement and they just received a police escort as for a safety precaution into downtown Pikeville. So what you are seeing arriving right now are members of the Traditionalist Workers Party. And Ronnie, if you can pan over this way, you can see uh, the t-shirts that are obviously the logo uh, that we have seen since they announced their arrival here in Pikeville. So what you're seeing right now are, are the members arriving and parking their vehicles. So, well, hopefully we can get someone to speak to us um, here just to talk about let me just just ask: Is there anyone here who would, would talk, would make a statement? To the, are you this way? Okay, we're trying to get over this way to see if we can't catch a quick statement um, from someone here. Is there someone here who could make a quick yeah, statement? We gotta get get information. We got time to screw off interviews. We'll do that after the rally or, or while the rally's going on. Uh, so you can see that they're here. They're running a little bit late this afternoon, um, but they're trying to get organized, and they're going to march over into their spot. So let's just stay here live with them for a few minutes, and you can see how they're going to organize, how they're going to plan on um, getting over to their spot. So we'll just stop here for a moment. We'll stay live, but you can just kind of watch as they continue to pull into the parking lot. As I said, law enforcement tells us there's about 40 cars in their caravan. So this is the much anticipated arrival of the group uh, that everyone has been waiting on. So let's just kind of just get some sights from the from as they organize. So as you can see, uh, they are planning to, to come in with their banners and their signs um, as they make their appearance into uh, downtown Platteville. They will be arriving through behind BB&T Bank. So that's what law enforcement has told us. They won't be marching uh, down Main Street. They will be marching behind BB&T Bank, which will come out behind the old courthouse and directly take them into uh, their designated meeting area. What you're getting right now are behind the scenes looks uh, at how they plan on appearing. They are still talking amongst themselves on organizing their group and how they're going to um, approach and appear into downtown Pikeville. But where we are right now behind the BB&T Bank building is outside of the view um, of the other groups that are gathering downtown. And I'm sure we will follow this group around. We will stay live with you. And I guarantee you'll be able to tell when they become into view of the other groups downtown. And we see they are, they're mostly gathered here, but there are still few vehicles that are pulling in and parking. So we're still three or four minutes away um, of them actually beginning their march into uh, their designated meeting area.
Looking pictures now live of downtown Pikeville, you see the National Socialist Movement making their way onto Main Street to where uh, the Antifa groups have been for at least an hour now, Gary Sloan, Absolutely. waiting on their arrival, certainly um, getting their things together. And certainly Shane and Ronnie have done a fantastic job. They're right there where they've been organizing how they're going to march into downtown um, exclusively on EKB News, the um, the organization of how they're going to get together. Traditional Swerper Party now we see, National Socialist Movement. Certainly when they get to the point um, of the courthouse there where the other groups have assembled, you'll certainly hear something. Absolutely you will. And of course, this once again, this is exclusive right now on EKB TV. You are seeing this live as it is happening. Uh, in downtown Pikeville. And again, approximately, as you heard Shannon a few moments ago uh, mention, approximately 40 vehicles came in. Uh, they have now disembarked out of the vehicles. They have uh, gathered themselves. And now, as you can see, uh, they're beginning uh, to uh, make a movement very shortly uh, to the rally position. Uh, Tom, uh, Dr. Uh, Tom Jasek is with us as well. And Tom, uh, your thoughts of this situation? Well, it just brings back memories of when the Ku Klux Klan came up from Greensboro, North Carolina, and tried to organize in, in Pike County and Johnson County, Floyd County. And of course, they had a march through Pike County, actually two of them. And the first one, local people just lined up and turned their backs to them, right. which I thought was a wonderful way to protest it without causing any violence or trouble, but it kind of showed their disdain for the group. Uh, of course, you have a very different situation now, and it's not local people who are protesting, but people who are coming from out of state. So that will certainly be a contrast. And we're looking at people right now that have traveled several states away to Absolutely. come to Pikeville, Kentucky for this uh, demonstration. Yeah. Uh, the anti-fascist movement was originally based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, uh, certainly they have a network that, that stretches across the country. So, yeah, they can bring in people at a moment's notice. A uh, few people here, a few people there, but when they congregate, you know, they can, they can make a stand. Tom, you mentioned a few years ago when the Ku Klux Klan tried to um, organize more here and, and, and did march. Um, let's explain a little bit about the difference in these two groups because I think there's some yeah. a little bit of... Um, confusion about the two. Well, the Ku Klux Klan has always viewed the Nazis as being something from a foreign country, which they are, of course, Germany and, and Europe, whereas they see themselves as something that naturally occurred in the United States, and they've been protecting the United States from foreign influences. Uh, you know, a lot of times you're splitting hairs in ideology, I guess, as you might with religion, and that's what you really see here. Sometimes these groups will come together for rallies like this and then other times they'll argue amongst themselves as to exactly what their stand should be. Uh, the Ku Klux Klan was uh, probably more southern and midwestern in its orientation. It was uh, certainly something that arose from the Civil War, though the original Klan died out, to really try to prevent African Americans from exercising the new freedoms that had been given them during Reconstruction. But it, it really died out in the 1870s as the federal government took a strong stand against them. It did reappear during a time in the 1920s when there was kind of a reaction to the intense immigration that was occurring in the United States at that time. And you actually see something in our own day that is similar to that. Uh, a lot of these groups are getting a hearing because in many areas of our country they have experienced a lot of uh, change in their population. Uh, the population is more diverse, and so I think that's causing some fear, and this is kind of a natural reaction to that. So though the groups are different, certainly some of the underlying causes for their emerging uh, are similar to, you know, the Klan in the past, and, and, and now groups like the Traditionalist Worker Party in the present day. 
Again, you are looking at exclusive pictures of downtown Pikeville. The rally is continuing. Now the Traditionalist Worker Party, National Socialist Movement, have made their way to their designated area, which is on um, the side of the old Pike County Courthouse um, where there's some benches and seats that people can congregate. And then across the street, the um, Antifa groups that have assembled, um, that they have stayed behind their barricade for the moment. And of course, we're certainly hoping that, that the calm continues. Of course, there's going to be a lot of dialogue back and forth, no doubt, especially when the rest of the groups arrive. But you can see certainly taking a stand there um, with their banners displayed, T-shirts displayed. Um, still calm for the moment and each party just exchanging some dialogue. But um, very unsettling picture there to see that, that uh, group member holding a very large rifle, looks like, at the moment. Um, not what you would typically see ever no. in the downtown streets of Pikeville. And as we've mentioned all day long, these are people that are not from here. They do not live here. Um, they have selected Pikeville, as Tom mentioned earlier, as a younger community um, with the college, mm -hmm. certainly with the University of Pikeville growing by leaps and bounds every day. Um, to gain attention for whatever their movement or their cause might be. That's right, and uh, you're, you're looking at these pictures now on EKB TV, uh, the video that's uh, coming in to us live. And so far, everything peaceful, as you can see, a line of law enforcement from various uh, agencies in between the two groups, the two groups inside their barricades. We pray that that continues uh, as it has so far. And we hope that that uh, continues. Uh, Tom, something that uh, uh, came to my mind, and, and that is, again, we talked about this earlier during our live show. Mm -hmm. uh, why Pikeville, Kentucky? I mean, we're talking a, 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 a town of, of say, 7,000 residents. And here in eastern Kentucky. Well, you know, this is a group that hopes to recruit people who are white and frankly, we have a, a very white population. Uh, it's not because of any extreme prejudice or violence towards African Americans. I mean, the, just the history of the place has worked out that way. And I think that they just feel that it would be easier to recruit in a place like this than it would be in, say, downtown Chicago, right. uh, where they would certainly get a lot of blowback. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jill? We're going to go back downtown Pikeville now live to Shannon Deskins, who is in the middle of everything going on. Shannon. All right, guys, we are live downtown again. I guess we have been live, um, but we have just witnessed the arrival of the Traditionalist Workers Party. Now, they have come in probably bigger numbers than people anticipated today. So uh, they came... I guess you can tell that they're they're ready for a confrontation. So we're not exactly sure now what the platform is going to be, whether they're going to try to speak. Um, obviously, the counter groups on the other side are using megaphones and noise-making um, items to try to drown them out. So I'm not sure what could possibly happen here um, that would be productive on either side. So right now, there's pretty much a stare-down going on uh, between the traditionalist workers' party. They're not being very vocal at this point. They're just kind of staring down the other side of the street. So maybe in a few minutes, tensions will settle and we'll see what will happen. Um, but we will remain to keep the cameras running live um, while this is going on here in downtown Pikeville. But you can see a lot of signs on the other side. They're saying no one wants you here. Uh, they're, they're calling the other side racist. They're yelling terms like Nazi. So you can tell there's some on the megaphone that are, I guess you could say, taunting the groups on the other side. So we have been told by law enforcement to be very, very cautious in this area. Of course, there's no question this situation is very volatile. Um, at this moment, anything could happen from either side. So we're going to take a quick break. Um, 
get resituated. But I guarantee if anything happens, anything changes at all, stay tuned. We will break directly live into programming here on UKB TV. I'm Shannon Deskins reporting from Main Street in downtown Pikeville. Thank you very much, Shannon, and of course, stay safe, uh, you and the EKB news crew uh, in that uh, very volatile uh, situation there. Uh, Jill, I believe we're going to kind of wrap things up for right now anyway. Right. For right now, we are going to wrap things up, but uh, stay assured that if anything were to transpire downtown, if things were to get a little bit more heated than they already are, we will certainly come back to you live and bring you those live exclusive pictures that you will only see here on EKB TV. In the meantime, though, if you want to follow throughout the day, our EKB News Facebook page will be posting live videos throughout the day, ekbtv.com anything that you need and of course on the stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting via radio we will certainly be updating you. We'll also be back at six o'clock for a complete wrap-up of the day's events but again if anything should unfold in the next little bit we'll certainly join you again live. Absolutely we will and our thanks also to Tom and Jason and, and uh, we thank you for being with us for the special report. This is Extreme Speech an EKB News special report.